And so this mega move, in my opinion, this is what we're starting to get into on gold. And if we go back to the current time on gold, Hello everyone, with a keen eye for technical analysis and an ability to interpret fundamental factors impacting commodity prices, Gareth Soloway has been sought after for his market commentary and predictions. His insights and perspectives have proven influential for traders and investors seeking to navigate the complexities of the commodity sector during bullish phases. Through his research and analysis, Soloway has demonstrated a knack for identifying opportunities and potential catalysts driving the bull run in various commodities, including metals, energy, agriculture, and more. Sharing is caring, and we encourage you to spread the word about crypto highlights. Tell your friends, family, and fellow crypto enthusiasts about our channel. Together, we can create a thriving community of individuals passionate about cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology. Weekly oil inventories rose sharply last week by about 5 million barrels, while economists were expecting a decline of 1.3 million barrels. However, this statistic did not prevent crude oil prices from rising by about 3% over the past five sessions. The reason is that traders are looking to the future, which looks more likely to see a price recovery for two main reasons. First, the U.S. Department of Energy announced the purchase of crude oil to begin filling its strategic reserves. We are talking about 3 million barrels at the moment, which is relatively small, but the information is clear. The United States is starting to rebuild its strategic reserves, which, remember, have been melting like snow in the sun since last year. Secondly, the International Energy Agency has raised its demand growth forecast for 2023 and thus foresees a tighter market in the second half of the year. Against this backdrop, oil prices have recovered, with Brent crude at USD 76 per barrel, while WTI is trading at USD 72. Do you believe we are on the precipice of a commodities bull cycle? And if so, what are the main factors you're seeing contributing to strength in that sector? Yeah, so I do think we're on, on the verge of a big bull cycle in commodities. In fact, you know, I, I've talked about, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, the gold chart and how it's borderline breaking a triple top. Um, I've talked about how the 1970s chart is very similar to what we're seeing in gold here. 1970s gold had a 9x in that period. So I think gold especially, I think the other metals as well, although some of the other metals are somewhat an industrial metal as well, and I think that's a little bit of an issue, um, just because if we do see a global recession, that obviously could take a little bit of demand away. But I, I do believe that we're on a verge of an overall um, big move in the commodity space. Well, let's start with gold, as you've just brought up there, because you've said you think it will be the best performing asset in 2023. So why do you believe gold will outperform? And also, what, what are the main ways that you get exposure to the sector? Yeah, so so exposure wise, um, there's a couple ways. So I'm a big believer in having some physical metal on hand. Uh, you don't need a lot, but the way I look at it is if we wake up one morning and the grid is down and the banks are closed and our credit cards don't work, uh, maybe we don't have any cash on us, then you have physical gold as a way of of you know, buying things in that type of world. So you don't need a lot of that, but it's kind of like just, I sleep better at night having some physical gold and silver on hand. The other side of the coin would be that we're at this point where you have the charts signaling this bigger move to the upside. And again, I, I love being able to show these charts here. Um, and just for, for everyone else out there, um, in terms of what I play on a swing trade basis, so if I'm trading gold, I'm usually using the GLD, or if I want the miners, the GDX. And again, the GLD is the ETF that tracks gold, the GDX tracks the miners. So that enables me to get in and out. If you're buying physical gold, it's not the best thing to constantly sell it and then buy it back and sell it and buy it back. It's more of a long-term kind of pass it down to my my kids if I don't need it type deal. But when we look at the gold chart, I want to show you this. So number one, if we zoom out on this chart, you had to move up from 2018 to 2020. From 2020 to basically the end of 2022, we went sideways to lower. Now, in technical analysis, this up move followed by this choppy consolidation, that's a bullish pattern. That's known as a bull flag. Since 2023, we've seen gold starting to take off. It re-attacked a triple top. Essentially, we have one 
two, three hits. Triple tops notoriously pull cause pullbacks, which is what we're seeing now, but they're shallow pullbacks, usually with a breakout that follows. So I do think that within a month or two, we are above this level. And I think by the end of 2023, we're probably looking at $2,300 per ounce gold. And I think even north of 4,000 um, on gold by the end of 2024. Last thing I'll show you guys on this is my favorite chart to show. And I'm just going to get rid of these trend lines so that it can be as crystal clear to everyone as possible. But if we go to our weekly chart, we can go back to the period of the 1970s, which was really the last time we had inflation that was kind of out of control, right? And what we saw in the 1970s is was this up move for two years from 73 to 75, then this consolidation from 75 to 77, and then look at the bull run that took place after that. And the reason I bring this to our attention is because the only way we can predict the future is by looking at what happened in the past based on the same factors that are occurring, right? And generally, we see history, if not repeat, at least it rhymes. And so this mega move, in my opinion, this is what we're starting to get into on gold. And if we go back to the current time on gold, the same sort of pattern. Here's your two years up your consolidation, and now you're getting ready for that bigger move that should take us up. Now, in all fairness, I don't want to get people too excited here. I don't see gold doing a 9x like it did in the 70s. You know, back then you didn't have Bitcoin as a potential alternative and other things like that. But do I think it can do a 3x in the next few years? Yeah, I do. Absolutely. So let's move on to silver because in precious metals markets, uh, bull market, silver is known to outperform gold at least temporarily. So do you see silver as a way to get more torque when it comes to upside price action? And I'm wondering if there's any risks in investing in silver versus gold. Is there more volatility? Um, what, what, what do you, could you shed some light there? Yeah, absolutely. So if we take a look at the silver chart, so so number one, there is more volatility in silver. Silver tends to go down more than gold and go up more than gold. The biggest risk, risk factor to the silver trade, if you're going to be in silver, is that gold is a pure play on inflation and fear, while silver is, an, is a play on inflation and fear plus the demand from the industrial complex or, the, or, or you know, businesses essentially, right? If you think about car batteries and, and all these other things that silver goes into, that is, again, partially a result of, of the price action in silver. So if, again, I, and this is something I'm fearful of, is that we're headed towards a bigger macro slowdown as the Federal Reserve has raised rates, global central banks have jacked up rates to fight inflation, it likely will slow down the global economy. The Fed's even predicting now a mild recession. And the question you have to ask Ask yourself is how much does that take away from the silver move when gold is the pure play? So again, longer term, if you ask me five years out, I think gold, a silver probably outperforms gold. But in the near term, I think actually a gold likely will outperform. In fact, if you just look recently in the last few days, we've had such a sharp pullback in silver. And if we go back to the gold chart here, it's been barely a pullback on, on gold. So it definitely shows us that gold is more volatile. And uh, it shows us that, again, you have to be aware of that as an investor. So a lot of our viewers are uranium investors. Uh, so I have to ask your take on uranium. Are you bullish or bearish long term? And do you see anything in the short term that that presents risks, potentially a, a further downside in the price? Yeah, so, and just being a chart guy, I, you know, for the most part, I just refer to the charts. Um, I actually don't mind the chart here. So this is the uranium ETF, uh, the URA. And the first thing that I see is you have a pivot down here, which we haven't hit. So is there a chance it could go a little bit lower? Yeah, it could. But overall, this pattern here is very similar to what we've been seeing in gold, which is that kind of sideways to lower consolidation, what we would call a wedge pattern, right? And again, if I remove this lower trend line, it comes a little bit clearer. That's a wedge from there to right there. Now, wedge patterns, when they occur after a big run-up like this had from 2020 into 2021, this would be known as a bullish wedge. So, you know, even if it dips a little bit more, for the most part, as long as this pattern holds, you would expect an eventual breakout and a run to the upside. So again, it doesn't give us like in the next month, it's going to have this big run. But I think over the next six to 12 to 18 months, I would be bullish on uranium here and expect to move up. Great. We definitely love to hear that on this show. Um, I'd like to talk oil and gas, but uh, one at a time and starting with natural gas because I feel like it often gets overlooked in the conversation. So I want to hear your thoughts specifically on that commodity. We've seen prices drop dramatically from the highs in August of 2022. 
Could we see natural gas rise back up to those levels again? Yeah, and that's a great question. So, I mean, the, the biggest thing with natural gas is it's it's kind of a it got caught up in its own success. And what I mean by that is if we look at the chart, it had this monster run up when Russia invaded Ukraine and there was this fear about uh, cutting off gas and was Europe going to be in a major pickle. And so what you got was every fund out there, every big investor, small investors, they all went long natural gas thinking, oh, this is the easiest trade in the world. One thing I've learned in trading is that when everyone thinks it's an easy trade, it's usually not, right? It's usually the opposite is what ends up happening. And that's what happened. And so you, you had this big fall because there were so many people caught off sides. On the long side, there was just so much selling pressure to the downside. Now, when you look at where natural gas is, to me, number one, it's a commodity, so it's going to be influenced by inflation. And number two is you still have the, the weather effects that we were seasonality, stuff like that. To me, is there risk that it could go a little bit lower? Absolutely, right? I mean, it could go down 5, 10, 15%. It's natural gas. But at these levels, if you had to choose, I would definitely be choosing on the long side here for an eventual move to the upside. In fact, I have a target price on it here. Let me show you guys here. See this little pivot right here with this pivot right here? That would be my expectation. So when you're asking whether or not it can go back up to eight or nine or ten dollars, you know that may be years from now, or if if there's another catastrophic kind of invasion or crisis. But at least for regular trading wise, my guess is you have a move up back to three dollars and forty cents, three dollars fifty cents, and that would be as a technical trader. If we got that move, I would be selling into that move. Yeah. So with oil, it again, it's it's one of these charts that you know the highs were put in when there was so much fear and panic over the Russia invasion, uh, cutting off the supply of oil to the rest of the world from Russia. And what we found out, by the way, is that Russia still sells their oil. They just sell it to countries that will buy it at a discount. So all that oil is still out there. What we saw recently about a month or so ago was OPEC cutting production. Now, one thing historically I know from trading for all these years is that when OPEC actually cuts production, you get the immediate spike up, and then it actually comes back and goes lower. And the reason that happens is the only reason they're cutting cutting production is because they anticipate a recession. And ultimately, once the market realizes that we are headed towards that recession, there's a big drop off in demand. Price has to fall, right? So basic economics. Now, looking at the chart here, we can see that there's a clear support level at the $64.50 level. All right, it came down here back in March. It retested it just recently in early May. It bounced. But I will say this is that I do think that towards the end of this year, we will break lower and likely head towards the $50 level. Russia and Ukraine agreed to extend the agreement on grain exports in the Black Sea by two months. Uncertainties have thus faded in Chicago, at least until the next round of negotiations. Wheat and corn fell last week to 620 and 560 cents per bushel, respectively. Also, don't forget to smash that like button if you find our videos informative and valuable. Your feedback is crucial in shaping the future of our channel and helps us understand what content resonates with you the most.